Dave Hogsett here for Practical Show and Roo. I'm continuing this uh, series on solo uh, pad training drills for uh, some basic bunkai applications for Fukukata itch. Again, that is a uh, the very first kata in Matsubashi Shonru, and many Shonru uh, systems uh, also use it. Uh, it has very basic techniques uh, that all systems have, uh, so I think this can be applicable to a, a variety of folks. The next part of the kata, uh, I'm going to kind of be conflate, uh, conflating a bit. Uh, down the middle of the kata, as, as a lot of basic forms do, uh, you've got a series of punches, a big pivot into a low block. Uh, on the first half is a lunge punch, step lunge punch. You do some things coming back up that eye, the middle uh, of the kata, so to speak, the middle of the eye, um, uh, is reverse punch. And for this particular application, I think Nakata is just saying you can set this particular uh, technique up either from a, a, a lunge punch or from a reverse punch. It just depends upon uh, the context uh, of the uh, combative uh, situation. Sometimes you're, you're stepping punching and you can get in there. Other times you're already in tight and you're reverse punching. That, that, that's how I'm in interpreting that particular uh, part of the kata. Why it is on one, one time you, you, you step three times and do lunge punches, the other times you're stepping and doing reverse punches. Uh, in addition to just practicing lunge punch and reverse punches, right? Um, there, there's also application for that. Sometimes in the context you're lunge punching, other times you're reverse punching. That's it. Um, now, uh, uh, some people think that you know, uh, karate is all about striking, uh, no throws, joint lines, that sort of thing. Um, well, that's not quite right. Uh, indeed, uh, in karate, we like to punch, we like to kick, we like to elbow. We're a striking art. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's right. Um, our our go-to techniques are striking. You want to uh, um, disorient or incapacitate the enemy by powerful strikes and get the heck out of there, right? However, there are opportunities for throwing, and there are basic throws uh, in, in our kata. Um, now, Soshi Nagamine, who uh, created this particular kata, was also a, a, a judo expert. Um, he, he taught uh, uh, police officers judo and so on. And um, I, I can't uh, but help think that when he created this form, uh, he was also thinking about the application of throwing. Because uh, you'll see in this next basic technique, the, the, the final position you end up in is a classic judo throw. The, 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 it's kind of the ending position of a, of a judo throw. So I think it's reasonable to apply a throw here. However, the difference is that in a, a self-defense situation, you're not trying to look for the throw, right? Um, if the throw presents itself, it's an excellent tactic to use to, again, disorient or imbalance your enemy to strike and escape. You're not trying to outthrow the person. You're not trying to throw for the sake of throwing. Rather, it's in the kata to let you know that here is an option. Here is a tactic that we can use, but it's not a go-to. The second thing to, to note that in most cases, there's always a strike beforehand. If you've ever done any kind of grappling or throwing art you can, you, where you're, you're not striking but you're just trying to throw the person, it can be really, really difficult. And there's this kind of maneuvering and dancing and all kinds of stuff you try to do to get the person unawares, off balance, so you can actually throw them. Someone who you're just trying to throw, who doesn't want to be thrown, it's really, really difficult to throw that person. Uh, however, if you blast them, you strike them, that's going to disorient them, get them their body in a particular position uh, where it's a little bit easier to throw so that that'll give you an opportunity to escape. All right? So again, in this, in this instance, we're thinking about the possibility of using very basic throws to help, um, to help you escape. Okay? So let's look at how uh, uh, we can apply those ideas in this particular bunkai application of Fukukata Ich. All right, so in the kata, um, we've done sort of, uh, or look, looked at, um, so we've got low block, step punch, low block, step punch, we did that low block, and then we've got three punches, right? From here, we've got a big pivot into a low block. That's uh, what I'm looking at as a throw. 
Um, so you'll notice right before that big pivot, there's a punch and then big pivot. Well, I'm looking at that as a, a basic throw. So one way to set this up or to think about is you've got that enemy has thrown a, a looping punch. You're going to uh, uh, check it. You're going to wrap that arm up, step punch. That's the blow before the throw. That punch at the gut level will get them bent over in the direction you want to make it easier for, to throw them. Okay? So you've got that, that check, you wrap up, you step punch. The wind up for that low block, you're just going to slip that arm underneath their armpit. Okay? And then from here, this leg steps the outside of, of their leg. This other hand is, is grabbing that hand that you had. You're just going to pivot and do what Zakata says. Pivot into low block, and you're going to throw them over that straight leg. They fall right there uh, in front of you, and you strike. So how does it look from this side? Okay, so basically, that technique comes in. You check it, wrap that arm up, step punch, they bend over. Arm slips under their armpit, step to the outside. Pivot as in the kata to that angle. You then just pull them over this leg, but you're going to do that kind of thing to help, one, protect your own knee, but also they're going to fall right there, okay? And then, boom, you can strike them, all right? So that's the, the sequence we're looking at. How can we work that using target mitts? All right. So here again, you have to be very imaginative because you're not necessarily going to be using this hand to be actually hiccating, grabbing, controlling limbs. It's a target, all right? So just keep that in mind. But you have to understand the technique first, keep it in mind, and then visualize that as you're doing it, but remembering you're also wanting some impact here, yeah? All right, so you're going to be thinking about that loopy punch coming in. You're checking, wrapping it up. You're going to then step in punch. There's that blow before the throw. So you just move that pad down, punch him in the stomach, okay? You're going to then put that hand underneath their armpit, throw them over that straight leg, and now you've got, this will be your target, your punch, and away. Okay? Let's look at it from this side so you can kind of see after the, uh, after the throw. So, that technique comes in, you check it, wrap it up, you step in, punch them in the stomach, slip that arm underneath their armpit, throw them, they should be right there, move your target mitt, and then you back away. And so you just uh, work that. And away. And then you can also work that to the other side. Right. So, technique comes in. You, you, you parry, or you, 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 you uh, check it, wrap it up, step punch, put that arm up underneath their armpit, throw them, strike, and away. And away. And then you just keep working that to both sides. So that's how you can kind of shadow box, but also get some impact training in for that basic throw. Now, the other part of the kata, the second part, instead of doing the uh, lunge, the three lunge punches, you've got reverse punch, reverse punch, reverse punch, another reverse punch, and you pivot uh, to that low. It's the same basic thing. Okay? The only difference is that you're working that initial punch from um, a reverse punch position instead of a lunge punch uh, position. So from here, they've, they've come in they're, in, they're in tight or in close, so you've checked here, right? So instead of stepping punching, you're reverse punching, okay? Now you gotta do a little uh, switch up on your feet, but that's okay. You're, you get the reverse punch, and then you're gonna step, pull that arm up under their armpit, step in, pull them over the straight leg, Strike and you're out. Let's look again from this other angle. The, the technique comes in. You've checked it, wrapped it up. You're just using a reverse punch here, right? You punch him, step in, throw them over the straight leg, punch, and you're out. 
Same basic idea, you're just initiating the drill from using either a lunge punch technique or a reverse punch. The, again, the idea for throwing in karate, there's usually some type of strike initially to disorient the person, to break their posture, to put them in a position where it's easier to throw them. It's not our go-to moves, but they're definitely there for us to practice uh, and, and to become proficient in. Um, the karate throws aren't at the level of a judo throw. Uh, if you do cross training in, in judo or jiu-jitsu, you'll get better practice at your throws. Um, but just know uh, that the throws are there in karate, but they're not necessarily the go-to. And there's that strike uh, initially to make it a little bit easier in order to throw. And the purpose of the throw is never to go to the ground yourself, but rather to put yourself in a more advantageous position so that you can escape. Yeah? So I hope that's been helpful for you, uh, looking at, again, solo training, shadow boxing, and uh, incorporating a, uh, um, a, a target mitt into your solo training so you can at least get a little bit of impact training in the case that you don't necessarily have a heavy bag. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that can help uh, inspire you to think of, of, of your own uh, solo training drills with a target mitt.